Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I bring you today's word for January 8, 2016. I'm a little excited today because I love Friday mornings. I love closing out the week strong and heading into the weekend strong. And then this Friday morning is the first Friday morning of the new year. So this year, this week, We've been dealing with a brand new series. It's a brand new year. It's, it's the year of refined focus for us. And so as we've been focusing and learning about how to focus on the things of God, I trust that you've been blessed. Yesterday, I shared a message with you from something Paul said in his second letter to the church at Corinth. And I told you that we're going to be dealing with that passage for a while. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5. So today we're going to go back to that same passage. This message flows in the same vein. And the title of today's message is The Battle for Your Attention. There is a battle going on, if you didn't know it, for your attention. Let's see what Paul said. He said, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought into the obedience of Christ. And we dealt with that yesterday. Yesterday we dealt with thoughts and we dealt with images or imaginations and we dealt with strongholds. We know here that Paul was teaching about this battle that's going on within the battlefield of our mind. Um, and, and we learned yesterday the importance of understanding that battle and the importance of focusing our thoughts and how thoughts lead to images and images, if unchecked, can lead to strongholds. Now, as humans, you and I, as humans, we have the power to focus on whatever it is that we choose to focus on. If you look at Genesis chapter 11, you see that people there got together and they chose, purposefully chose to concentrate, to focus on building a tower that would reach up into the heavens. Now, this was not a godly idea, so God came in and confused them. It was the Tower of Babel, but it was an idea nonetheless. And here's the point. Even though it wasn't a godly idea, it because they came together, because they focused, then the Bible says, the Lord said, nothing would be impossible for them. Why? Because they all came together as one. They were completely focused on the task at hand. They were completely, uh, they gave their complete focus over to the project. And because of that, the Lord said, nothing would be impossible for them. This is the type of power we can have when we can take control of our thoughts, when we take control of our mind, when we get to the point where we can master our own mind, where, where we reject every distraction, where we completely focus on whatever it is that we're seeking to accomplish. This is refined focus. This is laser focus. Now, when you understand that power, then you really know why both God and Satan are after your attention. If they can get your attention, they can then get you to focus on whatever it is they want you to focus on. So what does this mean to you today? As we close out the first week of the new year, as far as messages, uh, as we close out the first week of the new year in this new series, what does this mean to you today about your attention? I have three things to share with you. Number one, I've said it already, I'm gonna say it again, both God and Satan, or after your attention. God wants you to willingly give him your attention. But if you fail to do so, then he may attempt to get your attention. He may attempt to just do something that's going to grab your attention. And if he does so, he is doing it because he loves you. He is doing it because he, he sees you going down the wrong path and he loves you too much to leave you that way. He attempts to grab your attention. He attempts to get your attention long enough to, to jog your memory to who you are in Christ Jesus, long enough to remind you that you are the righteousness of God in Christ, long enough to where you can get to the point where you make a course correction and you get back on the path that God has called you to walk down, right? Now, Satan is also after your attention, but and if he doesn't see you going down the path that he wants you to go down, he will attempt to get your attention too. But when he does it, he doesn't do it because he loves you. He does it because he hates you. He wants to see you fail. 
He wants to destroy you and he will do everything that he can to get your attention as well. So the, the battle then is in the mind and is for your attention. Number two, don't force God's hand. Willingly give him your attention. Of all the thoughts floating around in your mind. Now, let me say this, and, and we've taught on this. I'm going to say it again. There's some people that are not focused. There's some people that don't focus their attention on anything. And those people are not really a threat to Satan because he'll just leave you alone because you're not going to get anything done that way. There's some people who allow thoughts in and then thoughts just, they allow thoughts to just run wild in their mind. These are people that are not focused, that are not organized. They don't know where they're going. And in that, in that case, you know, you don't really seem to be a threat to the enemy. So he'll just leave you alone. Now, God is attempting still to get your attention because he wants you to focus. Now, don't force God's hand. Don't make him get your attention. Give him your attention. Willingly give it to him. You have the power to focus. You have the power to purposefully give God your attention or to give, to put your attention or focus it on whatever you choose. Now, when whatever you choose to focus on or whatever you choose to give your attention to then becomes the object of your focus. And this is where you can become a powerful tool, both in in the hands of God or in the hands of Satan. That's why both of them are after your attention. Because if you get to the point where you know how to focus, where you know how to uh, uh, take control of your thoughts, where you know how to uh, take uh, uh, this laser focus and add some bulldog tenacity to it and then pursue something with all your might, you are a powerful tool. That's why God wants to, to grab a hold of you. God wants to use you. God wants you to give that power over to him so he can use you for his glory. Now, Satan also wants to do it, but he wants to use you as an example of the kingdom of darkness. Don't be used by the enemy. Take your power and give your attention over to God. Number three, and finally, don't be ignorant of the battle for your attention. Uh, uh, the Bible says that we should not be ignorant of the devil's devices or that word devices means schemes. We should not be ignorant of the fact that both God and Satan are after our attention. If Satan can get your attention for five seconds, then he'll have your mind for five minutes. We've all been there. Don't act like you haven't. If he can get your attention for five seconds, he will have your mind for five minutes. You'll sit there wandering, daydreaming, thinking about stuff you don't need to be thinking about. So he will get, no, no, you need to, that's why the Bible says to take every thought captive. You know, you, you take that thought captive and you reject it and you refuse to allow it to run its free course in your mind. Satan knows what you like. I mean, don't, don't, let me just say how the young people say, it. don't get it twisted. He knows what you like. And so he will orchestrate, especially for men who are visually focused, he will orchestrate situations where it just so happens that, you know, however you like them, however you like women, whatever it is that you like, everybody got their own thing. He would just set it up to where whatever it is that you like just happens to pass by. And he's trying to get your attention. He's trying to get you to shift your focus. He's trying to get your mind to run wild on things that are not like God. So don't be ignorant of that. Take those thoughts and, and take them captive. You don't have to allow those thoughts to rule you. You get to choose what you think about. You get to choose what you focus on. You get to choose what you're going to give your attention over to. Now, when you're cognizant of this battle that's going on in your mind, your then, your decision should be to purposely give your attention over to God every day. Listen, I'm not gonna force God's hand. I'm not gonna make God have to do something to get my attention. No, I'm gonna get up every morning and pray. And when you pray, you're acknowledging your God. You are giving him your attention. You give it over to him. And watch this. When you pray, remember, pray should be a dialogue, not a monologue. Don't do all the talking. Why don't you shut your mouth long enough to hear something? Slow down. Seek God. Receive from him. Give him your attention. And don't just do it in the morning. Do it every day, but do it throughout the day so that you understand that there's a battle going on for your attention. And you don't even want God to have to wage that battle. You just get up and say, Father, I don't need you to try to grab my attention. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you now. I'm going to give it to you every day. I'm going to give it to you throughout the day. Amen. If you do that, you're going to experience God's best. So let's speak something over our life. Repeat after me in faith from a believing heart. Say this. Declare this over your life. Say, Father, this is a season of refined focus for me. 
I now see how you have already graced me with tremendous power in my own mind. You have given me the power to tear down strongholds and to give my attention over to divine projects. I purposely give my attention and my complete focus over to your projects and whatever I give my attention over to, then the seemingly impossible then becomes possible. In 2016, I take control of my mind. I bring every wayward thought into captivity under the obedience of Christ. I intentionally give you my attention every day and throughout the day. You keep me in perfect peace because my mind is stayed on you. This year I am focused. I pursue my purpose with clarity. I accomplish all you lead me to accomplish and I do it by your grace. I will experience the best year of my life in 2016. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. Apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org. Sign up, get the messages. They're going to be a blessing to you. If you know someone who needs this message, then share it with them. As you head into this day, just be cognizant of the fact that there is a battle for your attention. Don't make God have to wage that battle. Give him your attention every day and throughout the day. God bless you.